Okay, a couple stories here this morning to help us with this scripture text. I was 16 years old, almost 16 years old, and I was standing in front of the people of my home congregation, and I had just completed a year of classes in which I was preparing for my baptism, because I grew up in a church that practiced adult baptism. And it was a requirement of that congregation that I grew up in that in order for you to be baptized, you had to give what is called a testimony of what you believed. And this testimony was the central part of your faith story. And it was expected to contain a description of a specific time in which you accepted Jesus Christ as your personal Savior. It's a very important phrase. A time, in other words, in which you identified that you were born again or born from above. But there was one problem that I I encountered as I stood there in front of that congregation that morning. I stood there in front of that congregation, included my parents, my grandmother, my family, other people who had watched me grow up, my Sunday school teachers, my neighbors, my friends, my classmates. The problem that I had is that I could not testify to a specific time in which I had come to this understanding. I did not have a moment in which I said, this is a time in which I was born again. I was born from above. And to make this even a little bit more fun, after you gave your testimony at my church, it was expected that the congregation would then vote on the spot whether or not to accept you as a member of a church and to be baptized. So what was I to do? I was caught in this moment of darkness. Maybe not so different than what Nicodemus is experiencing here in our gospel text with Jesus. Caught between a true sense of belief and wanting to see the kingdom of God, but yet not being able to do or to see the practicalities of what was expected. And here I was in that moment. And here he was in a bit more dramatic fashion, maybe, for him. Because, you see, he was a Pharisee, a religious leader, who held to a belief that righteousness or salvation was obtained by a strict adherence to religious law. Things you could do... Sorry about that. Things you could do, things you could not do, in order to be right with God. So for him, the path to salvation was not one of theories or wide interpretation or a sense of journey, but it was a practical, fundamental, it was one way to obtain this. You see, Nicodemus is stuck between what what he is and what he publicly proclaims to believe, his identity as a Pharisee and what his heart is telling him about who Jesus is and the freedom he feels because of what Jesus is doing or saying. He is in a spot, I think, that many of us find ourselves in in our journeys of faith, in this dark spot between what we think we're supposed to know, but yet the questions that fill our hearts and our minds. I think that many of us are in this dark space of bondage in difficult times in our lives. Maybe when we're faced with death or illness. Maybe when we're struggling with purpose or direction. Or maybe when we made a mistake in our relationship or workplace. These moments, these times in which we're questioned what we're doing in our lives, we find ourselves in this dark little place. And for me, in this story, when I was 16, here I was, expected to give a testimony that meant certain that had certain things that needed to be there, and I didn't have it. Those times when something is expected of us, but yet we aren't up to the task. And as I have been 
living in this scripture text this week, my, my Nicodemus question is basically this. Where does my acts as a person of faith, in other words, those things that I do, where does it overlap with the grace of God? Those things that I cannot do because of my human limitations. How far does my belief have to take me? And how deep will Christ's love reach into the midst of my life? In other words, when is the point in which I am free from my sin? I think that is Nicodemus's question today. Second story. A little over a year ago, my family and I, Pastor Julie, Katie, Kai, we bought a new TV. Now after measuring everything out, we decided that a 50-inch TV would be the right size for our space, and we could still use our current TV stand. So we saw an ad for a 50-inch TV that was on sale, so it was my task to go to the store and buy this specific television. Now what we did not know, because we were not looking for this, is that this week the 60-inch TVs were on sale for the same price as the 50-inch TV. <laughs> this was great. Imagine how much better 60 inches would be if 50 inches is pretty awesome. So I bought it. I brought it home. And as soon as I brought this massive television into our home, everyone said, this is way too big. <laughs> no, I said, this will be great. Just wait and see. We'll get it out. And it is big. <laughs> now it turns out that this particular TV model, instead of having that one pedestal that sits in the middle of the TV and it sits upon, like our old TV did, or like the TV that I was supposed to buy had, this TV had two pedestals on the end. And now it was too big to sit upon our TV stand. So we had to get out this other piece of furniture that isn't meant to hold a television and it sits up high and it doesn't look right in the face and here it sits big in this living room, obnoxious and it's ugly. <laughs> I was feeling the pressure of the room. I was sweating. And as we looked at it, I knew everyone hated it. And I said, well, let's, let's, just, let's just turn it on. And let's just see, hoping for this glorious moment of 60-inch brilliance that will just amaze everybody. I hit the power button. Lo and behold, it turns out that the screen is cracked. And the picture is unviewable. We sit in our living room looking at this TV in this way too big, sitting on this ugly table with a cracked screen, and we erupt into a simultaneous cheer. <laughs> Because now we can, without guilt, take this ugly, large TV back to the store and exchange it for one that we really need. In that moment, I was freed from my sin. <laughs> now, I share that story with you, my friends, because the answer that Jesus gave Nicodemus and that he gives to us is that it's not about the specifics of how we are born again or how we are born from above, but rather I believe our entry point into this amazing grace of God is that when we open our heart to our vulnerabilities, to our shortcomings, to our fears and to our questions and to our doubts, that is what we discover the over overwhelming wave of God's grace in our lives when we stand there with all of our flaws and our cracks and our junk and our questions. When I stood there as a 16-year-old in front of that faithful gathering of people, I told them I didn't have a specific time in my life when I accepted Jesus, but I had truly felt that God was always present in my life, and I did my best to describe to them what that was like. And the amazing thing about that moment in my flawed testimony is that God's grace showed up 
And they all raised their hands in approval of my testimony, even though it was one that sounded different to them and one that they weren't used to. And I was baptized later that afternoon. So you and I today, we stand in our moments of question and failure. We stand in our lives and in the darkness of our fears and with our hands and our hearts opened like Nicodemus. Not sure of what all this means. And God comes to us today in Scripture and He, rem- and he responds with the words of Christ. I did not come to condemn this world. I came to save the world. Eva was brought forward today for her baptism. Not because she did anything to trigger God into a salvation act, but because her parents, they're in the midst of their own journey of life. And in this journey, we are all joining them, inviting her into the same journey because Christ proclaims that we are born from above or again into faith, not because of what we have done, but because of what God has made real. So today, my friends, bring your questions, bring, bring your doubts, bring your fears, bring your hurts, and bring your tears. There is no condemnation here. You are free, my friends. Amen.